So, Ryan, you've, you, you're, you're a young man, you're a Christian, and this is your first time in the corner. Yes. What do you think you gain our experience in there? Well, I don't know, I just... I obviously watch so-called films on YouTube. Yeah. Obviously, I like all, like how you speak and how you stand up for the Christian faith, and I just wanted to see it in person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh well, that's very kind of you. Yeah. I, I, and and I think yeah, be, I think yeah, as Christians, yeah, okay, cool, okay, cool. we need to rediscover a kind of muscular Christianity, yeah. where Christians can stand up for our faith, our community, because liberal secular pluralism is clearly failing. Yeah. the Christian community. That's why Christians are being discriminated against, they're being targeted both abroad and here. And the Christian community is, is totally incapable. And the leaders of the church, the bishops, many of yeah. our pastors, they aren't able to think about political questions and about the political concerns of the Christian community in a Christian way. They borrow from the Labour Party or they borrow from the Conservative Party or they borrow from the Liberal Democrats. As Christians, we need to think about political questions as Christians. And that starts with and stops with me standing in solidarity with you and you standing in solidarity with me. So as you go into the park today, I just want to tell you a couple of things that you need to be aware of. Firstly, the Dawa team which are a group of people that have been coming to this park for decades, literally decades. They look for new Christians like you who've never been to the park and they seek to target you. They look for people like you so that they can use their arguments. And they have this script that they use week after week after week. And they target Christians like yourself in a way that to try and catch you out basically. Because lots of Christians haven't been taught apologetics. Have you been taught apologetics in your church? So, so, and, and with greatest respect to your fellowship, your, your fellowship is not equipped yeah. for this environment. Yeah. 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 Now, they look for people like you and they target you. And there's two types of responses. If they think they've found someone who's lonely, vulnerable and isolated, they'll get round you and they'll, they well, buddy pal, let's be mates, let's be friends, let's go for pizza after the park. They, they draw you into a circle of friends because they understand that if you can empathize with people, you will sympathize with them. And if you sympathize with people enough, you will stand in solidarity with them. And when you stand in solidarity with someone, it means that you can start to identify with them. Yeah? Guys, can you take this back a step? Yeah. Um, so in terms of, in terms of, oh, you'll put that out. So in terms of, in terms of our, our faith, yeah. We need to start learning apologetics in the fellowships so that people like you can come here and you can know how to defend your faith. But also, what we need to do is, is to make sure that we're well rooted in our communities, yeah. that we're connected with people, that we've got meaningful relationships in our fellowships. Because right now, lots of our fellowships don't have that. They meet on a Sunday, they have a cup of tea, and there's no real community. Do you know, does that feel familiar? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that needs to change because we are leaving people vulnerable in the church. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that happens. The, the one thing is they'll come around, they look for Christians who don't know apologetics and then they use these arguments that they've been using for 20 years or more. Yeah? yeah. So they know every response yeah. before you say it. And they know how to make you dance and then they make you dance and then it goes on their channel, another Christian doesn't know what yeah. he's talking about. So I would encourage you to have humility. If someone asks you a question and you don't know the answer, don't make it up. Just say to them, that's a good question. I don't know the answer. I need to go away and study my faith yeah. some more. Yeah? yeah? So that's the first thing. The second thing is don't, don't gamble your faith on your ego. Don't think to yourself, if you get into an argument and you lose the argument, that that suddenly means that you're you, you, the, the Christian faith has collapsed because I can't defend it. If you can't defend it, I assure you there is some brother or sister in the world that has given the answer. Okay. You just need to look into it. Yeah. So have some humility. Have a desire to research. Yeah. yeah. That's the thing. I have a lot of like Muslim friends as well, and we do have sort of debates and that. Isn't it? Yeah. But we're like they're obviously like my parents are atheists. Their parents are Muslims, so they've been brought up a lot more strong within their religion, a lot taught in it. I'm yeah. more self-taught. So right. I had to go on things like your channel, yeah. things like on YouTube just to obviously read the Bible, just to educate myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a lot of them arguments with my Muslim friends were like, 
they were getting the better of me sort of thing. You know, that, you know, do you know something? Like, mm. I, I converted to Christianity because of a Muslim. Yeah. And when I first started debating about Christianity, I got trashed in every single argument I ever had. Yeah. I didn't know what I was talking about. But I was also so youthful and stupid that I didn't even know what I didn't know. Yeah. Like, I was ignorant. But I was also ignorant about my ignorance. Yeah. You know? And, and, but you will learn. You know, as you can see, it isn't a case that the Muslims can't be challenged. And what I would say to you is also learn how to formulate a critique of the Islamic narrative and have a strength and a gravitas about your faith that makes it appealing to those around you. Yeah. You know, just out of interest, how did you become a Christian if you were raised by atheist? What um, happened? I don't know, from young I just always had a faith in God. I don't know, I don't know. Yeah. I think, like, sounds mad to say, but God just pulled me towards, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I don't know, I just always, like, in my room, I just, I pray, and I don't know, I'm not, I'm not so sure why. That's alright. Yeah. So maybe take some time to reflect on that. Yeah. Because if you can communicate how you became a Christian, mm. there's always some people in the world to whom that will speak. Yeah. The scriptures talk about us conquering the world through the power of our testimony. Yeah. Your testimony will speak to someone. Yeah. My testimony speaks to people. Your testimony speaks to people. So one of the first ways of being a good evangelist is learning how to say intelligently why you became a Christian. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. But whilst you're here today, I would encourage you to be an observer and a learner. Yeah. Don't get sucked into debate. Have yeah. that ability just to say, I don't know, I'm not getting in anything. Yeah, yeah, until you are at a point when you can get top side of your Muslim friends in debate. When you can get the top side of your Muslim friends in debate, mm. then debate here. Okay, yeah. Yeah? Like stepping stone. Yeah, stepping stone. We Christians have got to rediscover the art of learning. Yeah. Because our culture, Western culture, has not taught us humility. We're taught pride in the West. Yeah. But the Christian way is to come in a, with abasement and humbleness, to recognize your own ignorance, to recognize that you're on a journey, to recognize that you're growing and to grow in the faith. Yeah. yeah? So don't worry if you can't get it all right now. Don't worry if you don't know it all right now. Don't worry if you lose every argument. And don't worry if you don't know the answer. Grow in your faith. Remember that you're forgiven. Remember that God loves you. And try to cultivate a kind of church that if you were to bring one of your Muslim friends to that church, they would go, wow, this community, they, they're a real community. They stand up for one another. They have a sense of their own identity. They have a sense of their own history. They have a sense of their own values, a sense of their own beliefs, and they know who they are. And become that person yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I feel that's lacking though in this country. It is, bro. Mm. It is. Yeah. Now, I, I, I've spent a lot of time thinking about this, and the reason why it's lacking is that 300 years ago, before any of us were born, there was this philosophical movement called the Enlightenment, which became politicized, militarized, and, and expanded upon Europe through force, through what was called the French Revolution. Yeah, and Christians are living in the shattered remains of what it used to be to have a full, complete Christian identity. We're literally just holding on to pieces of glass from our past. Yeah, the, 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 the stained glass window is broken and the picture is gone and all we've got are shards. The ocean of faith has retreated and all that is left in its wake are little eddies and pools. And we exist in those eddies and pools. Yeah. And we need to recognize where we are as Christians in the history of the church. God has placed us here at this time because he wants us here because at this time the church is weak and it is our responsibility to make the church strong. Okay. And we can only make the church strong by being strong ourselves and following a narrative that gives rise to that strength. Okay, yeah. Anyway, I hope that's an encouragement to you. Uh, well, thank you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. You look after yourself and we'll speak again soon. Uh, I will do. Thank yeah? you. Keep watching the videos. I hope thank they help you. Sir. Uh, okay. Yeah, you take care. Okay.